So here we go, guys. Welcome back. This is episode two to the DTB podcast. Today we got some special guests, and we have. But before that, I want to introduce my co-host. KO, and today we got special guests J Fades and Flair the Barber from Presidential Barber Lounge. What's up, what's up, what's up, guys? Hey, bro. Uh, Just want to say thank you for having us, bro. Appreciate the the opportunity to be here. Excited for what's to come in this new show. Looking forward to what's coming, man. Let's go. Yeah, you know, same thing, man. Uh, Just want to say thank you guys for having us here today. So we could have a space to share a little bit of what we know in the industry and, you know, being able to answer any questions that you guys have. And once again, thank you guys for having us here. You guys have, have an amazing spot and looking forward to today. Let's get yeah. it. Yeah, today we're going to be asking some spicy questions for you guys. <laughs> Before that, we just want to start let's off. Go, let's go. We want to start off. What does barbering mean to you? Where wants to take it off first? Uh, barbering, man. Barbering has just changed my life. It's something that's part of me now, part of my family. Um, you know, it just pays the bills, gets us going, teaches you new things every day. Just, it, it molds me into the person I am now. Mm. And just keep on building me into a better person, you know? So, barbering means a lot. Dope, dope. What about dope, you, Jay? <laughs> yeah, to me, honestly, uh, man, it's a tough question because... There's a lot of things I could say, but one thing that I feel like barbering means to me is just a freedom of expression, right? Um, It gives you the liberty to express yourself, not just in a haircut, but outside in the world, right? Um, It teaches you different things, and you're able to express everything that you feel that you have inside into one haircut. You know, sometimes you're feeling good and everything, and, and you have a canvas, you know, to create something from what you feel, you know, and, and something something that you you can express, right? So it's, it gives you a freedom of, of expression, you know, um, and it's an art for me, you know? Yeah, dope. So today we just want to focus on sharing your story. You guys are, I want you guys to share your experience, your journey, um, on how you guys got into the barber game and what what it has brought to your life. Um, but I want, I want KO to kind of guide that, guide <laughs> that conversation a little bit. Dope, dope, dope. So yeah, I see. Um, so you guys are brothers, right? So what's that? What's that like? Um, who started first, or who showed who what? You know, and <laughs> who's, who's, that, a, who's, you know, better, who's know? better? Who's better? Who's <laughs> better? <laughs> like it goes back and forth. Me, that that <laughs> we always get that question yeah, yeah, yeah. going on, bro. It's been almost ten years, you know. <clears throat> and uh, everywhere we go, we, we're having a drink. We're out in public. Friends. We're in a gathering. It's always the same question, right? It's well, like, they ask you guys, hey, who's, who's better? better? Who's, who's better? better? You're true, you're true, you know? But, nah, you know what? He, he's, he's a better barber. He's Dang. a better barber. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that I feel like we teach each other, and there's a lot of things that keeps us on our toes. And the way I see it is if I see that he's better, I'm going to push myself. Mm, you know, I'm going to push myself every day because that's brotherhood, bro. We've yeah. been... I've known this guy for 30 years, man, yeah. and it's every day. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's just part of being a brother, you get me? Yeah. You go out there, you play sports, you want to be better than him, you know? You, so you told me you're older, right? Yeah, by year. So, so how does it feel right now that you're saying that he's better than you and he's younger? Man, you know. good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's it keeps dope. me on my toes, man, you know? That's it keeps dope. me on my toes, so. Yeah, you know what, oh, man? I think answering that question is like, you know, Everyone like like first says you know everyone always asks us like damn who's better at this who's better at that and and I think that's kind of like the questions you ask all brothers it's always like a question thing you know <laughs> but the good thing about us is man we're, we're always like in a in a good environment you know we have our ups and downs and everything you know but I I always look at him as my big brother you know mm. and he is my big brother you know he has showed me the way to different things and. I think he's a better person than me, and I think that that mentality that we have that each of us can teach us something different, you know, has got us to where we are today, you know, to be able to keep growing. And I'm going to always look at him that way, and whatever he needs, you know, I'm going to be there for him, you know. And I always, I'm always going to think he's better than me, you know, and... That's how it is. That's you know? dope. You, he says you're better, and then you say he's better. Man. <laughs> that, That's yeah. good. Because you know what? You don't see that brotherhood anymore, bro. Like, honestly, I have an older brother, but that brotherhood is not like, we don't do the same thing. We do different things. But 
Um, I don't know if you heard this podcast where like they were asking Andrew Tate like how was it to be in jail with your brother, and he said like man just growing up, thank God we had a good brotherhood growing up because in that moment everything played out like it was supposed to play out. So seeing you guys just have that relationship, bro, is it's awesome, bro. Well, so hopefully we don't we don't land in jail. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, know, nah, yeah. Hopefully we don't land in jail. But no, yeah, yeah, it's a relationship we always had, bro. Um, like like he said, you know, up and downs. Uh, arguments, fights, you know, he hates me one day, I hate him one day, but the next couple of minutes, we're like, hey, come on, man, let's go have some lunch. Hey, what, what was the last time no. y'all got down? We never did. You never did? <laughs> yeah, we've never, never well, did. we've never actually physically fight, Damn. you know, never, never, we've never, man. never fought, like, Yeah, But you just had enough, that re- mutual respect. <clears throat> uh, yeah, yeah, but, That's yeah, dope. yeah, at the end of the day, like, we're, we're old enough, and we always, we grew up in a family that is very family-orientated, you know, mm. so our parents... My my dad will see us fight. We get we we'll get whooped. We'll get whooped. Yeah. Whooped, whooped. You Wait, know what's your background? So, what, what are you guys? Mexican. Mexican. Yeah, fully Mexican. Mexican. Fully Mexican, man. Damn. What so, part of Mexico is that that you guys are from? We're from Puebla, Puebla uh, city, right? Um, we <coughs> we grew up there. You know, we're from Mexico. We're actual like. Mexican, we were born Mexican. there, you know. Oh, we you were born, born there too. Guys, want to see my shot? <laughs> Whoa! So you guys, I, I, you got the Mexican shot. I got the shot. I got the shot. Prove it, man. I don't get sick that quick. Yeah, me neither. Bro. I got like, I got like, uh, yeah. a, like COVID, three COVID didn't shots. get me that much. Damn, I was born in Mexico too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What happened? Damn, proud. But I came man. here when I was two. What age were, were you guys? We got here. I was uh, roughly six, seven years old. Just speaking Spanish. Speak Spanish, bro. Yeah. How many years apart are you guys? We're one year apart, you know. Um... Man, I think I think that's what has gotten us close too, because we we've grew up together, you know. So everything we've done, we've shared clothes, we've shared shoes, we've shared, uh, you know, friends mm. too, diff- different things. You know, we grew up together. We're one year apart, and I think we we think alike because of that too. You know, sometimes um, I look at him and he, he looks at me, and we're like, oh, damn, you were thinking about that too, and you know, that's I think dope. it's because of the age too. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but yeah, we we were born in Mexico. You know, our parents they did what they could. You know, and and honestly, it has blessed us. You know, they they uh, migrated here to this country to get a better life. You know, every every everyone has their own stories. You know, and I feel like that makes them who they are today too. You know, mm-hmm. and so when we were young, you know, uh, we were living in Mexico. I think I was um, what six six right. He was seven, and they brought us here. You know, to this country, and ever since then, man, we never looked back. You know, we've yeah. never gone back to Mexico, and it has been a big thing. It it, it, it kind of sucks, you know, but I mean, it's something that we we had to go through. It has yeah. molded us to to be stronger, mm-hmm. you know, as stronger yeah, stronger it's individuals. Just, it's a it's a different, you know, a lot of people have different mentality and different views, but I guess that's what kind of helped us and molded us into like being here and know what we need to do for our future, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, looking back. It's a little tough, you know, uh, just the fact that, you know, you, sometimes you can't go back for certain situations and stuff. I know. <clears throat> but, I mean, we built a, a, a good life, and we're yeah. working towards a better future right now. Yeah, and I, so I was far, talking to you know, one of my clients, and there's always a do- undocumented people that are be more successful than those who have, like, who are legal here, bro. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I think it's just in us. It's our blood, bro. It's just yeah. you, have a, you have a greater reason sometimes. Yeah, you know? we have, yeah, we have a greater reason. You know, you know what? It, I think it all depends on, like, um, your family, too, you know? Like, yeah. seeing your family yeah. grow up and, like, you're missing out on certain things. It, it, it kind of, like, even though you're small and everything, you see that, you know? You mm-hmm. see it, and, and you want better for your family, too. And so, like, I think that's what drives you as an individual to do more as what like when we grow up right because we've seen our family struggle we've seen our, our dad and mom kind of like missing out on certain things just to try to get us something good you know mm-hmm. and i think it's that process that that builds our mind you know to when we get a little bit older man you know what we can't rest you know we can't stop because our family's depending on us on us too you yeah. know and there is some undocumented um like uh there is some undocumented uh, people right that are here and that maybe are not doing the same things that we're doing but pr- it's probably because of their background too you know and it all i think it all has to do like that um but yeah bro so um, you guys come already come from like a beauty barber uh background uh yeah we do who, who cuts hair we do you know what uh it's crazy because uh we don't we we don't know m- most of our family back in mexico you know we grew up here we made our life here uh the people the very few family that we have here 
uh, you know, it's just people that work in different jobs. But I've asked my mom a couple of times, and a lot of her tias are, are in the beauty industry. Yeah. My mom's been in the beauty industry. So she always brought that upon us because she's always been a business owner, um, majority of the time that I can remember. And I remember her, like, taking me to the salon. You know, I'll get she owned her, her own salon? Yeah, yeah, I'll get in trouble, and she'll be like, no, you're coming with me. I had to go over there, sweep up yeah. the hair and stuff. Like, man, I hated it at that point, you know? It was just... So yeah. when was the first day you guys picked up some clippers or like, how was that? How was that <laughs> experience? So so honestly, Flair, Flair was the first one to start cutting hair. Like, um, just because you would be with your mom more, huh? You know, because he would get uh, in trouble more, trouble probably. More. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know he's what? Like, get over he's always been. It was a, yeah, I'm a year <laughs> older, so uh, I graduated high school first. I wanted to go to college. Mm. I wanted to do something different. I had a different. I want to do something completely different than cutting hair. Uh, at first, I didn't want to cut hair, bro. I, I didn't want to cut hair because I've always been involved in that. <laughs> get me? And then since I was young, like it was always like, oh, you know, my mom would take us to work. We're nine, ten years old. We used to be there at the salon. We used to just be around, running around us. Get me? You know, a typical Friday, Saturday, you're busy and stuff. You know, no, no babysitter watch you. Yeah, it'd be all so, day. So, yeah. So, it was like, ah, oh, here we go again to the shop. You know? Um... But yeah, I, I picked up the clippers first about what like six, five, six months before you? Yeah, like six months. I would say like six, seven months. Um Something he like picked that. up the clippers first and you know, as a little brother, you're always trying to do something yeah, your big brother that does. your big brother <laughs> does, uh, you know. Hey, but is that is that why you started cutting Because you're like, damn, my brother's cutting here and well, let me do it too. Honestly, <laughs> yeah, bro. You know, yeah. honestly he uh man, this guy I'm, I'm you know. He was a big motivation for me to do it, you know, and then obviously my mom too, you know, my mom uh, pushed me to do it. Like in the beginning, I remember it was crazy, bro, crazy. I used to work like a, a nine to five too. And I would, after my job, right, I would come to the salon where he would be pretty much practicing and, you know, starting to learn how to cut hair. And I would see him, you know, and he sometimes he'll be chilling, you know, sometimes he'll be resting and he'll tell me sometimes like, hey, well, why don't you learn how to cut hair, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm making good money. Like, at that at that point, it was good no, money. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. At that time, uh, he was probably making the same amount as me. And, man, I'll be tired, you know? I'll be tired. And he would always push me. And While you were working in a job? Yeah, so oh. I was working uh, pretty much like a, a regular 9 to 5, you know? I would mm. get the bus. I didn't have a car back then. I would get the bus over there. Would spend. Uh, he, he used to work with me, too, you know? We, so yeah, we used to have job. We used to have job. Crazy, right, crazy right. job, so... We used to work. We, uh, it was a warehouse, bro. It Man, was a we warehouse. I started then. working that warehouse. <laughs> we, we, we've we've been. Started, yeah. <laughs> That's we've a horrible been. experience, bro. <laughs> it, it, that it made is. me be like, I, I can not. I, I, as a mo guy, bro, how many years you have doing this? He's like, 17 years. Oh, hey, I don't know how you've been doing it for this long, bro. Yeah, something right. that I hated it, you know? Yeah. We, used to, we used to be very uh, into sports, man. We used to mm. play a lot of soccer back then. We grew up with that, you know, in high school, soccer team. The school team, everything. So we used to love doing that. And when we started working together like that, damn, we'll come back tired, bro. And we wouldn't have no time for that, you know? Get home by 7 p.m., 8 p.m., tired, eat, go to sleep the next day, the same thing. So I remember uh, I remember I did some, I, I did, I, I always been kind of like the rebel one, you know? Yeah, Yo, the black sheep. <laughs> yeah, the little black sheep. So I remember I, we were at this job. We were at this job site, and I hated it. It was tiring. So I wanted to get fired, bro. Like, <laughs> uh, I told this guy, man, you know what? Oh, forget about this job, dog. Like, I'm done. So I remember there was a camera in the top, uh -huh. and we used to work with pallets. So I would put four pallets together and make, like, a little casita, you know? <laughs> and I'd right just be chilling there, bro. Uh, I'll be chilling there. I'll hear the, the, the bell, and all right, time for lunch, time for break, you know? But I'll do it just to get fired. Mm. You know, and I told this, uh, and a week happened, bro, and nothing, you know. And I'm like, damn, I'm on top of the camera, nothing, you know. So it ended up being that the camera was not working, right? Oh <laughs> so, my so god! So I told, I told, I told him, hey, <laughs> you know what? Like we used to get home and and we'll get home and I'll be like, hey, let's go play, let's go play, bro, because I'm, man, I'm full of energy, you know. Yeah. I didn't work, I was just chilling there, sleeping on my phone, and he'd be like, no, hell, no, I'm tired. So I start telling him like, bro. Pull up, like, you know, pull up to the right casita. Here. Yeah, pull up to the casita. Yeah, bro, I was like that for, like, literally three weeks, so I just got fed up, and I quit myself, man. Dang, yeah. I quit myself, and 
something happened and you know what my mom had given me a pair of clippers that little combo with the peanut and the designer damn yeah. the red designer Yup, the red designer, bro. What was it like? Yeah. Almost like 60, hey, somebody, 70 bucks for that combo? Some of these barbers don't even know what the pina is, bro. They they know. Know. Tell them what it was. Tell them what it was. It's pretty much probably one of the first outliners, bro. Hitters, though. One you of the you first know? outliners, you know? That was like when I when I was going to high school, that's what my, what my barber was using to do designs on me. And oh. it was like the machine, the go-to machine for designs in yeah. the, at that point, you know, which yeah, is a really man. dope peanut clipper. It's like an old school thing. I'm, I'm guessing, you know, back then, I'm pretty sure the barbering industry wasn't too heavy, wasn't too strong, mm -hmm. you know? So majority of the times you'll go to like a barber shop, it's always a lady. You get me? Back in the hood right there in Linwood, there's two or three ladies that have been working for years that I swear they're probably one of the most famous We're right there people. on Otis in Tweety or what? Uh, right no, there? it's in Linwood. Oh, there's, Linwood. A, there's a barber shop called, back then, what's it called? It was... Um Frenchie's Barbershop. Frenchie's Barbershop, bro. Yeah, shout out yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out, shout out, some, shout out shout Frenchie's. Out. <laughs> and then I think it, I think they switched up their name when, like, uh, uh, Frenchie's kind of passed away, you know, then they switched up the name to Artistic. 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 Mm, and, yeah. Artistic, and that was, like, the go-to yeah, spot. So, but but it was the barbershop and they had, there was so, ladies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so majority of, the, majority of the time you get a haircut back then, I'm talking about, like, 10, 15 years, maybe 20 years ago, bro. Uh, yeah. You know, the barber industry was pretty low, you know? Really? It wasn't that many barbers like that. Uh, it just started being, I want to say maybe like 15 to 10 years back forth, you know, it started growing a lot more. Yeah, and a, lot, yeah a lot of more guys start seeing it. And it's, it, it's crazy how how we changed the barbering into a, a guy majority business mm, now. Yeah. You get me? And now, now, nowadays, we're starting to see more females come now, up. Females are coming more back, females man, are yeah. coming back hard. They're, hard, yeah, man, hard. they're punching back. Bro, they're cutting fresh. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, and the, yeah, man. And the so. good thing is that there's a lot of girls, for example, right? Like Tanya is a big example of what a woman barber or female barber can do in the industry, you know? The sky's the limit. Just like us males, right? Like w w it's a male-dominated industry. Yeah. But, man, you have you have girls that are, that are putting in the work. Like, for example, right, Tanya, man, she's been doing... A lot of things yeah. for the industry, and and she's putting out a lot of stuff. And shout outs to and her. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see she's really yeah, consistent with her content. Yeah, very, very proud very of what she's doing. Content, she's done. You know, very, very proud. <laughs> Seen her grow for you know the last four years and so and yeah, it's crazy how you know they're doing. They're growing a lot, and the work they put behind the chair. Everybody sees the following growing. Everybody sees the success, but. Very few people get to see what really happens the behind work. the church, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Everything that's involved in your daily life, and right. your social life, your personal life is crazy. And for especially a female in this industry right now, right now, that it's a male-dominant job up mm -hmm. to this day because, well, actually, I'm, my bad, you know? It's becoming more even now because yeah, of yeah, that. Yeah, you yeah, I mean? Yeah. Because you have females like that that are pushing, pushing the boundaries, and then now girls are seeing like, damn. You know, like she's doing all of this. I love that. I love this. I can do it. You know, and yeah. it's it's a great example. They're being they're being a great example. And yeah, flowers you to know, her, you know what's, to her. What, what's crazy is that you know she just did, she just had her grand opening. You know, yeah. we hosted the whole event and stuff. You know, and what was really impactful for me is that at that event, I seen a almost like an even ratio. There was just yeah. as much girls as there mm. were guys. You know, whether yeah. they were in the industry or cosmetologists or makeup artists or braiders. You know, we we need to start stepping it up if yeah. we don't want them to take over, you know? <laughs> yeah, because, it's crazy. Guys, man, there's you know? no limit to that, you know? But uh, going back on, you know, like the female barbering and stuff, you said that there was two two of the, I guess we could say, OGs from our town. I don't know if you guys remember Sandra. that. Idea. Sandra. Sandra, yeah. Sandra, you know, Sandra, and artistic yeah. and uh, Frenchies and Sandra, Lucy, uh, were the, some of the ones that, you know, they were going in. Like, people were literally just waiting for them for hours there to get the haircuts. Like, they would just open the shop and there was a line. Dang. It you was, know? yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, you know, back to back to the topic was the, the peanut, the crazy peanut, man, you know? Yeah, that's what I started with, bro. A you started? peanut, a designer. A peanut was a little small outliner, had no power whatsoever, but it was just what was getting it done at that point, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then... You know? What about you? what about you, Jay? What were, what were the ones you started with? Uh, same thing. I think I started with uh, man, I'm trying to remember right now, but I think I started with the peanut. Peanut was like one of the biggest things that I mean, as an outliner, you know, you yeah. it was like your go-to, the designer too. 
we used to um it, it would come like in a combo so at, at that point we were just starting you know so we didn't get the best clippers yeah. you know we didn't get the best trimmer the best shaver like we just got what we could and once you, you know, upgraded which ones were like the ones you bought like you're like oh i want I'm taking it to another level. The Andes? Yeah, yeah, I remember. Well, back then it was everything was core. We're the talking about like ten years ago. Yeah. No, uh, I no, I stuck around with uh with Wall for a while. Mm. Yeah. The uh, the uh Magic Clip, I think Burley came out not too long ago. But back then it was like a, the classic, the uh. Which one, the Burgundy Magic? It it'll be like I think yeah, it was a Burgundy Magic. They recorded at yeah, that time. With and then they also had like the Sterling. the Sterling. The Sterling. The Sterling was back then. You know the classic one. Uh, yeah, bro, uh, we, we upgraded as soon as we started learning different things, you know, but... Wait, wait, did you um, ever use the Wall Senior, the Five Star, the black one? Yeah. Yeah. The core one? Yeah. You know what, back then... Heavy it was ass machine. Heavy, but Knock I, somebody bro, out with that. <laughs> I went crazy looking for that, bro, because I told mom, take me, take me to Sally's. Went to every Sally's. They didn't have it. And then I was like, damn, I'm going to have to order online. And it was like 100 bucks. But for me, that that moment, I'm like, 100 bucks? Yeah. It's a lot. But when yeah. I bought it, man... Yeah, back uh, then. Yeah, you, back then. Back then, you would scatter a couple bucks, you know, try to get the the cheapest clipper to <laughs> kind of like last you, you know. Yeah. You weren't really thinking about that, but as you grow your career, man, you want to get the best clippers. You want to get Wall. You want to get uh, Andy's right now. It's, you know, for example, like the FX, Babyliss. right? Babyliss. Like they're all pushing new products that are like a lot of barbers want and and low key a lot of barbers need, you know, because they want to push out good content, good haircuts, you know. Good old um, days, fifteen dollar haircuts. 15 dollar, yeah, 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 good yeah, old yeah. days, you know. Actually, no, back then, nah. back then was like ten dollars, bro. When I started, when I started uh, down the street, uh, there was a place where they were charging like what, like five, eight bucks Damn. for haircut, bro. Hey, there's yeah. still some spots. There's still some spots where it's ten bucks. Yeah, but like MacArthur and like, you know, they're not gonna get the best haircut. Yeah, you, you know, know what? Um, there has to be spots like that because you know clients are gonna realize what the value is. You know, yeah, so yeah. there's value for everything. You know, eight dollar haircut, you kind of exp- know what to expect. You know, beside or against, like let's say, a twenty, thirty, forty dollar haircut. When you walk in, you kind of know what to expect. You know, and so I, I think as a barber shop, there needs to there there needs to be businesses that offer certain things so that mm. they see the value of what you bring to your business too. You know. Yeah. And I think these five, six dollar haircuts, man, they're good too, you know, but they offer a certain quality that when they want to look up a certain barbershop, for example, like our barbershop, you know, our walking price is thirty dollars. They kinda know what to <coughs> expect, you know, because of the price, you mm, know, and, okay. and everything's needed, you know. So I think so, so you mentioned you guys you guys have a, you guys run a, your own barbershop, right? Presidential. So before that, did you guys work at another shop? Like uh, no, we never, ever, we, never work, we never we never worked for anybody else. Damn. Uh, our our well, first our first shop that, that we built up, uh we 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 were together. It was like a family business. Uh for your mom? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And uh we started building it up little by little. I remember uh I started cutting hair and and we started we started hitting it all pretty good, bro. It's just always been a strive that we had, uh just promoting, passing cards. Uh, we've always had a lot of support from people, you know, oh. uh, yeah, all our friends, all our family members, uh, just pe- people that we know at school and stuff like that. Like, you know, thank God for everybody that's been in our journey. Uh, and I think we owe everything to them, bro, because, mm-hmm. you know, the support has always been solid, 100 percent back at home, you know, 100 percent. It's never been a time where I can see somebody in the street and be like, yo, what's up, bro? I remember you like, damn. You know what? Well, seeing you guys go this much, like I still go to your shop. You know, I still recommend people, and it's just something that that we've been blessed with, man. And yeah, I remember our, our first business, like it was just a family oriented business, and uh, I started cutting hair, and we started getting a lot better. Uh, my brother, I, you know, we started we started getting into this, and he started cutting hair as well, and. Yeah, we started building up the shop little by little. How many chairs did you guys have right there at the shop? Uh, at yeah. first it was just yeah. At first it was just we had maybe like three chairs, two chairs. Um, you, you know what? Actually, thinking about it, man, like just looking back, we did actually work for somebody. You know, we worked for my mom, and and mm. I yeah. feel like 
I mom. feel like we started there, you know, and, and we did work for her, you know. She helped us out when we started coming up, you know. She gave us the space and the opportunity to grow with her. You Were know? you guys welding now yeah. at that point or no? At, the, at that yeah. time, I think, well, I was, hey, well, we, I, I was we were young. We were I was young. 20 years old, bro. We, we were I young. Mean, we were dang. typical young youngsters, you know. Yeah. They're like still like trying to make some money, get me trying to grind it out. But it was like, yo, like. Like party money and no, shit. Yeah, yeah. Like really no big, big, big giant responsibility. Just kind of like party <coughs> no, money actually, yeah, or no, just like, had, you know, separate this from separate from that. We have responsibilities. Um, we we kind of left the house a little earlier than a lot of people we see now. So we've always been not on our own because we always have our parents support, you know, uh, friends support and stuff like that. But we always kind of we were always like taught and like push to for us to be responsible for our own things yeah. you know so yeah we left our house at an early age earlier than a lot of people now you know that i see and yeah, yeah the the responsibilities were there bro yeah. so it was like hey you got to make some money for the bills you got to make some money for your clothes and then we got to go and get what, a your mom was telling you guys booze rent right <laughs> there or what? booze rent your mom yeah uh, well back then uh, we just help her out we we, we would go halves We'll pay the bills together, you know, so we mm. whatever we had to pay, we had to pay. Um, but yeah. So yeah. At, the, at this point, let's go back. Um, I think a lot of a lot of the audience and a lot of the upcoming people, upcoming barbers, I think, you know, like they hear presidential and they're like, mm. man, that's top notch right yeah. there, bro. Like I want to work at that shop. Yeah. So give us a little insight of kind of like how that started what's the presidential legacy like like when you guys were with your mom were you guys already <laughs> named presidential or how did that come about or well, take us take us off from there you know you guys are working at your mom's shop you guys already know how to cut hair um what sparked up or like you know what let's move this let's let, let, let's get more barbers in here let's expand the shop what, what was that like for you guys uh you know what our first our first uh our first name was not presidential, so we got to take it yeah. a little bit back. Our OG name. <laughs> what was it? What was a lot okay. of people, yeah, a lot of people back in the hood, they're going to see us and they're going to remember the first name, you know? What was it? A&J. A&J Barbershop. AJ? Yeah, Barbershop. AJ, 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 AJ. You know? AJ. So it, it, it all started there, you know? We, it, 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 in the beginning, it was my mom's shop, you know? And then as we learned the industry, as we learned how to cut hair, as we started getting better, right, we eventually started, like, taking over that spot and, and made it into a barbershop because back then it was a beauty salon slash barbershop, you know? The so same it was, spot? It was, her, it was, uh, it was a oh. different spot. Oh, so different okay. spot. We started in Southgate, the city of Southgate. You know, shout out shout out to the city of Southgate where we started our, our careers there, you know? And eventually, like I said, you know, we started growing, we started moving stuff and, and the idea of like building another barbershop, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, you know, it, it did come a lot from Flair. You know, he was the first one to to bring something up, and he's always been a risk taker, man. Like that's the thing that I like about him. You know, he's always been like, man, let's do this, let's do this. A little jumpy, you know, <laughs> a little jumpy. But man, that's that's what pushes him, you know, and that's what has pushed us to to do certain things. You know, I'm I'm a little bit more of the calm calm one, right? I analyze things before we do stuff. You know, I try to tackle it different ways. And I remember when we wanted to expand, you know. He was the one with the idea, and, you know, we came together, and we thought about it. We we prayed to God, you know, and, and I feel like that's that's been it, you know. Like, God has kind of helped us with everything, you know, with yeah. everything that we've done. It, it, this, has, this is not just us. This is God, you know, and, mm. and I think, man, just keeping that mindset, you know, has gotten us here too. But I remember back, back then, you know, presidential started with that, you know, and— we were in Southgate. We decided to do something different. He came out with the idea, and we did it. You know. Um, yeah, I think I think you know what it works perfect, man. Cause me and her, we're just like a, we're together. We're balanced out. You mm -hmm. know. Yeah, balanced out. Uh, no, yeah, we have like more logical. We have You're different more like the visionary. different personalities that bring us together and together, man. We've been doing crazy things. You know. Uh, like I say, you, you get me. Sometimes he picks up my slack. Sometimes I pick up his slack. Uh, it's just different, different point of views that we both have, mm -hmm. ideas and stuff like that. That you know, sometimes I want to go too fast, you know, and, and some, I you know, he's, yeah, he's yeah. the one that you know what? Hey, bro, come on, what about this, dog? Like, yeah. let's do it. We can do it, you know. All right, bro. 
you know, calm it down a little bit. Like, let's think about what can happen. Let's think about what's going to happen, mm -hmm. how we can tackle it. All right, boom, 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 you know? And <clears throat> that's what that's what's been helping us out. You get me? Yeah, presidential started uh, about seven years ago, eight years ago. What, what year was that? Uh, 2014. 2016. 2016. 2016. 2015 was when we thought about it. 2016 when we officially opened up uh, our first big lo big location because back then was probably one of the biggest barber shops. Damn. You know? Um, and yeah, we were back uh, at N and J's, and it's crazy. You know, it's like I said. You get me? We always try to involve our teams. We've always been that that type of people that we like to help out everybody out. You know, like come on, let's build, let's do something. Uh, and we've always had support. So there was one of my barbers back then, one of our, our guys. Uh, shout outs to Carlos, you know. Uh, we we were we were already kind of in the process of doing the shop. Uh, I had found the location first, and it, everything wasn't working out. Then I found a bigger spot. Um, I fell in love with it, bro. I fell in love with it. I, I showed my brother, you know, and I was just going crazy with ideas, crazy off the back and. You know, he was like, wait, you know, damn, you think it's it's the right time? It's expensive. You know, like, <laughs> are you going to figure out the, the bills? Can we do it? You know what? Like, we'll figure it out. Just go, bro. Yeah. And one day I came and I had the papers and I was like, we signed. Damn. You know, we signed. So, yeah. it's you know, it's either it's either I'm screwed and I'm paying the the lease for the next five years or, yeah, yeah, yeah. or yeah, you push I, it with I me, bro. I think a lot of people like to know, like, at that point, how did you guys fund the business? Like, you, at, when you signed the lease, you already had the the like your budget, the money saved up. Or you, <laughs> you didn't have anything. You know, you know, it's crazy because I'm laughing because we recently touched on this subject Damn. at the barbershop because I, I I work at their barbershop too, a presidential barber lounge, and um, Blair was telling me that you know he came with the paperwork and he just told his brother, I don't know how we're gonna do it, but the I'm signing the lease, bro, and we're just gonna <laughs> figure it out on the way. And you know, that that that's why, you know, uh, uh, big ups to Flair because you know it's a big time risk taker and you know, sometimes you that's, that's just what, that's what, what you, you have to do. That's you you, you need to do it. Yeah, you need to do it and yeah. not look back and just look at, you know, at the, at the, at the, at the vision that you have and, and, and bringing it to life and, and look at them now, you know, seven, eight years in the game. Yeah. You know, look at um, what type of legacy they have built right now, uh, which has been really, really good. It, uh, yeah, for you it guys. takes. You know, you know, as as you get, as as you get more experience in the business, there's a lot of a lot of things that you see that you could have done better yeah. back then that would have probably put you in a better position. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I think our timing was just perfect for everything, man. You know, like the fact that we started, in a, in, we started at a different. At a different rate, we started with different things, with a different mindset. Everybody that still in our circle, all our our you know clients, friends, family, uh, the first thing they say, man, is like, damn, you know what? Like, I seen the growth that you guys had, bro, mm. and it's it's incredible, man. Yeah, incredible from having you to cut cut me up in your chair in the living room to the first shop, NJ's. To presidential in the beginning when you opened up, you know, to what presidential is now, to when you opened up the salon, to when you did presidential bellflower, to the presidential that you guys have now is just, damn, bro, it's so amazing how you guys give back mm -hmm. to the community. And there's never not one time that I do not go a few days without hearing, hey, those guys, look, they're crazy. They're giving back to the community. They're doing this, they're doing that. Like, yeah, I, I, I seen them. You know, since we started. So I feel Very like, good. yeah, I've always been that type of the guy to take, you know, that little leap of faith, you know. And God has always done this, bro. He's He's helped us out, figure it out. But we had some funds. We yeah, had some, some funds fun. back then. <laughs> you know, we had some funds. We had an idea. We were saving up. Um, fortunately, fortunately and unfortunately, I remember one time I had just purchased a car. And they wrecked it right in front of my house, you know, and I Damn. got paid and I, I told this guy, you know what? Dog is God. God. They paid you off the car completely? Yeah, they paid me off. Damn. So I told them, you know what, bro? Like, God, God's giving it to us. You know what? Bam. All the money into the <clears throat> shop. Come on. Yeah. Get you me? know, I, f I feel like I got to touch on that, too, because... Like the question, right, is like, how did you guys do it? And I feel like taking risk, right, that was that was something that was needed, you know? Mm -hmm. 
but we didn't take the risk out of nothing, you know? Yeah. We got ourselves prepared. We were already booked up. We had a, a big clientele flow already, you know? Uh, we, we had a voice uh, as a barbershop already, you know? So when, when that happened, we were already ready, kind of, uh, kind of got ourselves ready for something like that so mm -hmm. that when the opportunity came, you know what? We're not going to miss it, you yeah. know? And I think that's something that I want to give out to maybe the barbers that are coming up, right, that, that want to build the business, that want to do something, right? Um, yeah, go ahead and take the risk, you know? Go ahead. You know, you're always going to have to do that. But get yourself ready for it, mm -hmm. you know? Get yourself ready for it because what would have happened if, if for example, right, <clears throat> We were starting off from scratch, and we didn't don't know nothing about the business, and we would have had that money and just invested in anywhere, you know? Yeah. Who knows what we, where we would have been right now, you know? But thank God we got ourselves prepared, you know? We, we worked really hard, and we got ourselves to a point where, you know what? If the opportunity comes, we're ready for it, you know? That's probably, and that would probably be one of the, 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 the hardest things to swallow, I guess, you know? Like, trusting in God's timing, but when God's giving you the time and you're not ready. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That, would, that would suck, you know? So God's always willing to give you whatever you need. You know what I mean? He's always willing to give you whatever you need, whatever you desire. It's there, son. You want this, grab it. Mm. You know, but it's just the, the fact that if you're ready or not. So at the end of the day, he, he's letting you dictate your course, you know? Yeah, so yeah. like he said, you know what I mean? The time was there and we were prepared we were already thinking into the plans of doing that. We were preparing ourselves. We were already working into that. So God's timing was perfect because it was just a little push that he gave us. And he said, you know what? I, I see you guys. Come on. Damn. You know? So what was like, if you guys don't mind sharing, what was like the budget that you guys wasted to start? Just to start, like, boom, we got barbers. You never have a budget, bro. Nah. <laughs> when it comes to that, yeah, you just think about buying nah, stuff. You well, think like, about like, damn, I'm going to spend, let's say, 20, 30, 40,000. It's never that. It's going to be more. Yeah, I have always. a guy, I have a homie that's an accountant. He told me, whenever you budget, whatever Double number it. you get, <laughs> multiply it times three. And I was like, damn, bro. Yeah. And I did that. I did that for, for you something. Know, you know what? Back then, the 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 times were different, too. You know, like $10,000 back then, you like, know, ah. was different than $10,000 now. Yeah. You know, so... I mean, if we were to come out with numbers, it will kind of be kind of vague for the audience, too. You know, we're like, oh, yeah, we started yeah, with this. You can, start, you can start with it now, you know. But times have changed, you know. Things cost more. Um, there's more things to think about, right? And obviously, everything goes up. The price goes up, you mm -hmm. know. So whatever we invested back then, it was a small quantity, you know. But now I feel like, man, to get something started, at least, uh, you know, at, at least to have a, a mid-sized barbershop or mid-sized business type is requires probably a little bit more than what was required back then, you know? And, you know, I'm sure, uh, for example, Kayo, uh, he's uh, getting into certain things that, that he's seen that, you know, and it's good because you realize certain things that, that you know, are, are required, right, to, to start something like that. And it's going to get him ready for bigger things, you know? Yeah. And, and, man, I'm excited. I'm also excited but for... For Ko too, because man. like man, I honestly I see Ko as as like Flair as my brother, you know. Yeah. Because man, I want everything to go great, and sometimes I worry a lot. I worry for him, and I'm like, you know what? Oh, damn, what about this? What about that? But you know what? Like, God is perfect, yeah. you know, and God will guide him too, <clears throat> right. you know. And just trusting in that, and trusting on my guys that that man, I've been with him for a long time, you I know. Did, so how did and you recruit Ko to Zen Business? Man, it was, it was, uh, <laughs> tell him, it, tell him. <laughs> honestly, it's just like, like, God. I mean, we're gonna bring God a lot into this, you know, because yeah. it's just that that's what it is, you know. God's plan, you know. I, I, it was, it was something special for me, too, you know, because I remember, um, I had to start school, you know. A lot of people don't know this, but I started cutting hair and I, I wasn't licensed, you know. That's something personal for me that like most to share, it. you know, but you know, I did what I could without a license you know but it got to a point where you know what like i gotta do things right you know i gotta get mm -hmm. my license i gotta go to school and you know timing is perfect bro right so at that point i needed to go to school i started i enrolled into master academy you know shout out to master academy mm. i enrolled into master academy 
And I remember the first week, you know, I was looking into like, uh, I was, we already had the barbershop. So I was looking into mm. bringing new people in, you know, mm. I was like, you know what? I want to meet people here that I could probably help out or, or, you know, they could help me out too, you know, bring them into the team and, and do something dope, you know? And at that point, I remember um, I, I seen Kale, you know, at, and at, at school. And uh, yeah, I seen him at school. And, and I remember, man, the, the very first time I seen him, you know, like, I don't know what it was, bro. He was still I, handsome looking. You know, music. it was the beard, you know. <laughs> he's always, I still, yeah, I remember that day too. He, he still had the me. beard. You been rocking he's the beard since then? I, I was rocking the beard. I didn't. I, 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 it wasn't as crisp and as dope as it was <laughs> as it looks now. But yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I was rocking the beard. My beard was beefy still. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And, beefy. Yeah, I remember and, that. I remember that. And you know what? I was always seeing him like motivated. Right? He'd always be in school, helping other people. Like doing different stuff, right? He was into color, too, back then, like, and what? I didn't, I didn't mm. know him, right? I didn't know who he was in, in the beginning, like, all I seen <laughs> was what I saw from my eye, you know, and, mm. and all I could see was that, you know, that he was always moving around, helping people out, looking for different things. It, it was at the school, you know, and I seen that, and he was helping people out, helping out the school, bringing new ideas to the school, and I was like, man, like, you know what? We need, need him. That. I remember you know? that call. Yeah. We need yeah. him. That call. You know I've been and familiar with, with K.O. for a while, too. And I remember uh -huh. he called me one time. He's like, yo, guess what, bro? We got a superstar. I'm like, well, what's up? He's like, I yeah. think I found somebody that I want him to work at the shop. And I was like, who? He said, his name's Victor. He goes by K.O. And I'm like, K.O., I, I know him. Yeah. You know, I'm like, yeah, I've been familiar with him for probably high school back in the days, party scenes and stuff like that. Oh. You know, it's always been. <laughs> I can really see. Always, he, was the, he was the one hosting the always, parties. Yeah, always been, always yeah. been on top of a lot of things, you know? Yeah. So when he told me that, I was like, do it. You know, do it. That's dope. Do what you got to do, man, you know? The the goal is to, to build a killing team. The goal is to to be, be that team, you get me? Yeah. So you feel like you see something in this person, you got my 100% trust. You know, and mm. I back you up. And look, honestly, Ko's always like, man, like he clicks with a lot of people, bro. Yeah. He's just like, I'm sure there's a lot of people that have met him, and you meet him, you're like, damn, like, all right, he's super friendly, environmental, right? Like, he got the riz. He has that, he got you the know? Riz. and that's something that pushes pushes everybody, you know. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I remember that time, I the first time I met him, you know, I was like, you know what, he's gonna be one of the guys to to build something bigger here you know yeah. and man i don't know if i have the eye for it sometimes you know but sometimes i gotta i gotta you know put myself in there too you know but i seen that and i was like you know what we could do something together and he could help me out i could help him out you know no. and man five years later you know five years down the road it was the best decision that we could have mm. done yeah we've been you blessed know? we've been very oh, yeah. blessed with the, with a lot of people in our team yeah, you know, I, I seen your team, bro. You got a solid team, bro. Yeah, man. You have a solid team, bro. Everybody brings so, something good. How to was the that? Table. How was that approach, like creating that culture in the shop, bro? Like, how did you hire certain barbers? Who do you know? Like, how was that hiring process? Because something that I'm learning too, like later on, I'm gonna open up my shop. I gotta get that down, bro. The hiring process, you know. I wanna learn how to how, how you guys did that. Damn, majority of the time, bro, it's being patient, man. Mm. You know, we've been in business for for ten years, bro, and. And we've been, we've dealt with a lot of people, good people, bad people, good intentions, bad intentions, uh, great mentality, sometimes way better than us, better mm. mentality than us. And at that point, it's just sometimes that, you know, you can probably let a, per a good good person go because you, you're you not completely uh, mentally prepared or mm. just prepare as, as in how to tackle certain situations, yeah, you know? Yeah, like if they try but, to be the spotlight, you're, you're kind of yeah, feel intimidated. Yeah, uh, uh, no, we've never felt intimidated no. when it comes to that, you know? Uh, we've always been the type of persons who are like, damn, bro, I want you to do better than me. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, good. I want you to grow better, so I want you the next time you leave this shop, bro, don't work for anybody else, bro. I want you to have your own spot, Yeah. you know? So, I mean, yeah, we've, we've always built a team uh, happy to say, and I'm very, very happy for the people that have worked with us. Uh, we've, there's about eight, nine shops that have come out from, from Presidential that I'm Damn, very, very for happy for them. Eight, nine yeah. shops? And about seven or eight, I want to say, you know? Um, and every single barber that have worked with us, including them, they have their own thing that ha 
has always put in work into our business that have made our business mm. to where it's at now. Yeah. You know? And a lot of people will probably see, like, oh, well, they're the owners. Like, how do you do it? You know, like, how do you get your business to get that that flow or that culture or that yeah. popping, you know? Uh, majority of the time, it's not us, you know? It's us. Like, yeah, it's like the mom and the dad, you know? Like, you're guiding the family, but mm -hmm. you can't get farther if you don't have people helping you out. Right. How many yeah. barbers do you guys have right now? Right now we're uh, 15 guys 15? right there at the barbershop. Yeah. 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 You know what? Um, Damn. the good thing the good thing about the business right is that I mean we have a lot of experience right. So like everyone that comes in, we kind of know how to guide them to become a better team member, a better team mm. leader, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, there's certain certain uh, uh I would say like tasks for certain barbers that come in right. So when we do the hiring, honestly I, I look at well, a lot. You do the interviewing? I do the interviews now, you know. Uh, Flair has, uh, ever since he opened up the other barbershop at, at Bellflower, which, um, you know, it flourished the way it went, right? Um, I had to take over that uh, that area of Linwood, right? And so I kind of, like, took over a couple of the th different things, right? And it has helped me out to grow to where I am today, right? To be more professional, to be more more active, to, mm. to be a team leader, right? Yeah. And I show that through the guys, right? But a lot of times when we hire people, right, um, I look at that, you know, I look at what that person can bring to the team. You know, some people are going to be happy. Some people are going to be, um, like, say, super energetic, right? Some people are going to be super hardworking, right? Like, they're going like to show up on they're going to show up on time, you know? Yeah. They're going to leave mm. on time, you know? Mm. Um, and when I do the hiring, I look at all that, you know? I look at, all right, well, what can this person bring to us? And not just that, right? Well, what can I add? to him or to that barber so that he can grow with us, yeah. you know? And a lot of the times, if I, if I feel like, <clears throat> which is kind of rare, you know, but if I feel like we can add value to certain barbers, then, you know, we go a different route. We choose a different barber, you know? Mm. Um, because I know that uh, when they come into the team, you know, it creates a different atmosphere if you can't really add value to them. And at the same time, if they can't add value to us, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And so it's really hard. But most of the time, when you talk to somebody, you kind of get, yeah, get a feeling so. of how they are, you know? Obviously, it, you don't know exactly uh, <coughs> the future, right? You don't know how it's going to be, but you get a feeling of how it can be. I know? think that's that's probably and the main key to, to hiring your barbers, you know? Um, there's a question earlier, right, with, with uh, Holy. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people out here that are going to hear the podcast about, like, damn, I'm looking forward to opening up my own spot. I want to do something, and probably in the near future, you're going to open up your shop. Uh, that's probably the biggest question. How do I find barbers? Like, how do I get good a good barbers. team? You know, like, damn, I'm stressing. Like, I need to fill up my chairs. Like, I need to pay the rent. I need to pay the bills. Um, majority of the time is just being patient, bro. You know, being mm -hmm. patient to build a good team because if you're on a rush to fill up your chairs to, to pay the bills, you're going to get any random barber yeah, out there, yeah, you know, correct, and getting correct. any bar random barber is going to, it's just, you get me? If you put a fruit that has mold into a, a bowl of fresh fruit, gonna your fruit is going to rotten up yeah. the next day, you know? And that's, that's pretty much the principles of a good team to run mm. smooth, to run well, and to always grow. You know, uh, we're very picky on who we get, but majority of the time, like he said, like Chu said, um, it's what can they bring to the shop? What can we bring to them? And majority of the time, we don't look at the skills. We don't look at the portfolio. We don't look at where they are. We don't look at how much money they got. We don't look at, mm. you know, what they're doing. You get me? Majority of the time, it's like your energy. Mm, you know, yeah, your yeah. energy. Like, I want to see what you're about. I want to see how much you really want it. I want to see what you're willing to do to be here with us. Because everybody in here is doing what they need to do for everybody to succeed. Yeah. You know? I, so yeah. I, th I think right now we have a, a very, very, very good team. And it has came down to, like, maybe having a very not so good team. And it has taught us a lot of, a lot of different things to kind of, like, build that, you know? Um, but it, 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 it all comes down to, like... <laughs> Like looking at these people, like and, and seeing eye to eye, and, and knowing what they can can add, right? And a lot of times we made we made bad decisions and we've made good decisions, you know. But ultimately, I think making bad decisions have have 
taught us certain things, you know, that have molded us to be better people, better leaders, right? Back then, we weren't we weren't how we are now, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, back then, maybe certain barbers right now that are looking at us that are like, man, they they weren't like that, you know. And it's true, we we had to learn the route, you know. And, and now, ten years down the road, like we're able to share information because we did make mistakes, you know. We we went through every route that we could have probably done wrong, and thankfully now we we got a a different direction, you know, because of the things that we've made mistakes on, you know, and it's a lot of ups and downs in the business. Yeah, and, I, ups and downs. I think just being able to hold that and 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 realizing that you're actually messing up sometimes, you know, it makes you a better person, a better team leader, you know, and ultimately gets you to to being a better better person overall. Yeah, you know? I like that. I like that because a lot of um, owners, honestly, that I, that I noticed is always just about them. It's not about their barbers and stuff. But once I met GT, I realized that GT was about the bar, like he was just trying to make your life better inside the shop, you know. I feel like that's what you guys do to all you guys. Barbers, yeah, you know? I know. I know a lot. Of, I, I'm familiar with a lot of owners sometimes, uh, a lot of barbershop owners, and, and I've always been a person where like, hey, you can pick my brain, get whatever you can out mm-hmm. of me. Why? Because I want to learn off of you. Yeah, you know, like I want to learn off of your experiences and stuff like that. I, I need to get better in life as a person and as a business owner. Um, and majority of the times it's been like, yeah, like, damn, it's a struggle to get barbers, bro. Like, how do you guys do it? Mm-hmm. You know, and it's always been in my mind. It's always been my thing to tell to tell them, you know, like, hey, bro, like the best thing you can do to keep your barber motivated and to keep your barber shop chair busy and full all the time is by making him win, bro. Mm-hmm. Make him win. And he's, he's gonna, gonna make you there. win. Yeah, you you, know? you create an environment like a winner's circle, you know. And, and a lot of nowadays, you know, it's it's people actually contact us to get in there, you know, to into the barbershop. And it's because we have created a a circle where everyone wants to win. And people see it, you know, when when you know, I I see it, you know, because people come and tell me and they're like, "Damn, look, you you guys got this barber, and like he wasn't like that." You know, and like as soon as he joined your circle, which is our circle, I call it our circle, you know, man, you see a big difference, you know, and it's it's because of that environment that we create, and and a little tip for all the barbershops, right? It's really that just creating an environment so that people can go in there and create their own business to make their dreams come true, you know, their dreams come to reality. Because every barber has has dreams, every barber has goals, you know. Some people is to get more clients, some some barbers is to charge more, right? Some barbers is just to get better at, at their quality service overall. And some barbers come in there because they want to learn the business, right? They want to open up their own barbershop, their own studio, right? And you give them the space to do that without any any bad energy, man, they're going to grow and they're going to, other people are going to want to come in there, you know, mm-hmm. because they see it, you know, people come out of there and man, like they're bigger, bigger barbers, you know, and ultimately that's a, like a big tip for the barbershops, man. You want to have a good team and like, you want people to hit you up to, to, Hey, where's it? Is there a barber chair open? You create that and man, it works wonders. You know, it works wonders. Can, can you share like, what are like three, four things that you guys do with your team that, that keeps them like involved? Because people always want to be, part of something you want to feel part of a movement you know and i yeah. noticed that you guys do have done that but can you guys share like some activities that you guys do networking keep, networking networking a lot of networking i think our whole our whole environment at the shop it, it falls into networking man going to events supporting support support to the community support to the barbers support to the shop next door support to the shop across the street support mm. support to uh, somebody's business you know, I saw too um, that you guys like go go like you guys do recreational activities outside of the shop too. A lot. Yeah. A lot, huh? Yeah, that yeah. that actually I think that's that's a big key factor, being a team player, you know, uh being <coughs> one of the leaders right there at Presidential Barber Lounge. I think, you know, I always have these talks with, with Flair and Chuya in regards to like what can we do, you know, just to continue the le- the legacy going in and keep everybody, you know, united and you know, and I feel a lot what what has helped us out is is, is t- doing that like the, the these mm-hmm. outside of the barbershop activities where you kind of let loose as the individual and you know you may be going through you know relationship problems you know yeah. financial issues or just you know somebody's sick in your family and you just kind of kind of let it out you know and then sometimes you know while while we're doing these things like you, you find who you connect because you know mm-hmm. we're a big team there's 15 of yeah, us no, you know 15 people you know like 
not everybody's on the same level and everybody's on the same page, but getting out of the barbershop and doing these like little events, like we've gone paintballing together as a team a few times. Mm. We go play basketball here and there. You know, the guys got, have gone, you know, uh, to the uh, top golf, you know, different other things, you know, let alone, you know, we've traveled together to, you know, like Vegas Expo, different things like that. I feel like that's really, really unique and keeps Correct. us, you know, it's eager to, to, to just keep going, to be like, oh, you know what, he, he just doesn't care about me because I'm, I'm paying his chair and, 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 you know, he's getting, getting that money, you know, but it, it's more of the, of the, you know what, this team is really united and they, 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 these owners and these people, they're really trying to be leaders to, mm -hmm. to caring about our personal life, let alone how to grow as a, as an individual and as a, as a, as a barber uh, being part of the team, you know, and that, those have been really, really good things. You know, so I think those things there are a big, big bonus for us as a team uh, that we like to stay together in or outside the shop yeah. or a, whether it has to do with yeah. barbering or not, just regular life. Right. It's a family, you yeah. know, it's yeah. a family, bro, because like I said, the energy that that we choose to have around, it's like, bro, I, I take my kids around the guys, mm. you know, I, I take my yes. kids to the shop. We go to events. Mm. Everybody brings their kids, their family, their wife. You know, so majority of the times we're very selective on the energy we let in mm. our circle. You get I, me? Uh -huh. Like, uh, you know, uh, everybody, like, we're, it's 15 of us, you know, so everybody has, like, uh. a different personality. Everybody has a different way of thinking. And, I mean, we we look pretty dope in, yeah. in pictures. We oh, look yeah. pretty dope in videos wherever we go. But, I mean, there's still problems inside, yeah, the, the, no, you know, man. like, hey, they're fine. Like, they're talking shit to each other, you know, like, hey, come on, guys, you know. Yeah. Like, uh, like next, you're using my on. supplies, man. Yeah, like, no, you're using yeah, my supplies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, right now, right now, something stuff, that man. I enjoy seeing, that I, I love seeing you guys from you guys, is your content, bro. But, like, <laughs> like just yeah. making content at the shop, bro, is different because usually you're in the shop, bro, and you're, like, you're making content for yourself. Yeah. You don't care about anybody else. But I see how you guys are coming together and making content for the shop, you know? And then for me, I know it brings a different type of chemistry between you guys, you know, because it's like production, acting, you got to script it out, and hey, you do this, you do But then it, it also builds team chemistry, bro. It yeah. does. Can you, so, can you walk a little? Come yeah, so a little bit? That, that's what we work as a team, too, and I feel like it's a family because of that, too, because when there's an opportunity to work together, we always want to bring other people on, you know, like... For example, right, the content, right? We could do it ourselves as, as me and Flair, right? But we're always thinking, like, man, like, how can we have everyone working together? Because mm -hmm. ultimately, that's what creates, you know, what, like, these ideas as a family, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. and everyone kind of, like, shares their own idea. And you get you get a different picture of, of what kind of person they are, you know? Oh, yeah, And, yeah, and yeah, you, yeah. you don't just look at him as uh, or your teammate as a as a co-worker or, or just a barber, you know, you, you know him personal, like, damn, he has these ideas, you know, he's able to share his thoughts into, into our creations. Yeah. Right. And that's why we create the family. That's how the family is created because you're able to connect with your, your uh, team member, right. In a different level. And, and you look at him different, you know, because you look at him more as a family than just a co-worker, you know, mm. you're like, damn, how can I help him out? create this type of content you know yeah, yeah and we do all these things right together so that we could recreate that too the content man it works because we've been building something like that as a family for a long time and whenever we want to do something together we got guys that are like man can i can i do it can i do that you mm. know and we allow that you know we allow them to be part of that and it helps the barbershop flow and and the atmosphere too you know and that's something big for us that we do we always when we do something we bring the barbers you know i'm always thinking like yeah. all right we're doing something for example right we're doing this podcast right here and i was like man i want to bring somebody right and i i did tell one of my barbers you know he probably he couldn't make it for certain mm. things right but he was excited he was like man oh yeah and i told him like yeah you want to come along you know because I feel like it's something that I could share with him yeah, too, you yeah, know, and, and it's something like that we it, do, right? As, it, as it's an something that you know? Keo said earlier, you know, it's something that that uh, as a barber working at that establishment, it makes you feel like, you know what, like I'm not just here paying paying his his rent, you know, mm, I'm not just yeah, here paying yeah. his bills. Like a lot of a lot of the barber shops that I that I know, a lot of barbers that that have talked to me, like, hey, you guys got spots, you know, like I feel like. 
I feel like my barbershop, like, they don't care, you know, like, I'm just there, and damn, it doesn't, it, I don't like working, you know, like, you get me, and, and our environment right now, our family has, has put you, in, has put the shop in a position where, like, it doesn't feel like work, you know, like, you get in there, ready to do whatever, you, every day is exciting, because every yeah. day you're going to do something crazy, you know, it's like, damn, I wonder what the guys are doing right now, dog, I'm going to pull up to the shop, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. and, and day bam, day off, you too. walk in, and they, oh, damn, somebody's doing something crazy, come on, you know, and like he said, you know, like Chuy said, like, it's inviting for everybody, and everybody just, they, you know, they support each other, other so heavy, you get me, like, you know, like, they share sandwiches, <laughs> yeah, they share drinks, is there hot Cheetos, yeah. you know, <laughs> and so, like, hey, fish my soda, like, yeah, yeah, it's really, it's really, really impactful, not just, like, in the barber industry, but, you know, we run into a lot of different people when we go, every, uh, different places and stuff or even when you're out at the supermarket or anything like that be like oh see i saw the video you guys did even if i'm not mm -hmm. in the video they know i'm part yeah. of that team yeah. so yeah. it's yeah. like credibility yeah. all around no matter yeah. what it is you know because they know you're part of that family and it's just like big ups for everybody mm -hmm. you know and, yeah, yeah, and you know and and and, and it, we make it, it i know it's, it looks so so easy and stuff, but yeah. it's it's a lot of hard work because you yeah. know, fifteen people, fifteen different minds is like to get everybody together on every the same day. page is like every day you'll get a comment like, Dang you, your big you guys' video is dope as hell. Hey, we, we, you know, let me check who, right who pulled out a new video. Oh, the video yeah, right yeah. Now that has like Gotten, gotten the most views or the most reaction. Which one was it? Tip right. your barber. Tip your barber. Sorry, I no. saw you guys laid it out in the, in the front. So, <laughs> so that idea, right, it came to my head. I was I was cutting hair and then, like, we were already working on, like, team content, right? So that idea came. I was cutting hair and I was like, damn, like, we should do a video like that. You know, tip your barber. And I just said it and out of, like, it's just the atmosphere thing, right? Out of nowhere, like, I got uh, Chandler and then Jaime were like, oh, let's do it like this, let's do it like that, you know? And so that helped us create that video. And, and honestly, I didn't expect it to go... Uh, what did it hit? The, the views that it has right now, I think it has, like... I mean, it's big for us, you know? About 400,000 views big right now. That's nah, I think it's at, I think it's at 350,000 right now. But, yeah, but we have gotten a lot of comments, a lot, a lot, a lot of... I would say like hate on it, but oh but it's good. God. You know, it's good. It's good though. It's yeah. good yeah, it's because good. It, it it shows what that's, people think too. You know, that's our biggest. It keeps it relevant so as well. You yeah, know? I think the most relatable to us was the one with when who is it? Jaime with the barba. Yeah, yeah, Jaime, yeah, Jaime, 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 Hey, um, Diego's gonna go to Kmart, yo. I'm like, bro, I didn't want. I gotta come back. I gotta come back with like, yeah, man, two so bags. Just I gotta imagine be charging them. Hey, bro, you haven't paid me. It was eighteen. It was eighteen. Yes, it was. It was, uh, it was like a whole mess, bro. It was just, so relatable, though, bro. It was just good. imagine doing that for fifteen guys. Oh my, oh yeah, <laughs> fifteen. Yeah. That's yeah, not no a, cheap ticket, so, you know. So, bringing food for fifteen yeah. people, that's two, three hundred yeah. bucks, you know. Like, hey, as a matter of fact. Some of y'all owe me some some <laughs> Zell me. <laughs> Moy, Zell me up some more Zell me right oh now. Oh my god, nah, hey, yeah, bro. That, that was dope. That's crazy. Shout out to my team, yo. Yeah, Shout out yeah. to to my team, man. These guys, I, I I always say it, but I do mean it. Like, man, mm. everyone makes my day. You know, everyone puts their part, their effort. Here and there we have, you know, little little disagreements, but man, we ultimately have that connection of like, you know what, let's do it, you know? Yeah. And I, I thank everyone for their support, everyone for putting in their part, and you guys make it happen, you know? It's 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 all of us, you know? And yeah. I appreciate that, and shout out to my team, Presidential Barbershop. Yes, yes sir. Presidential. Best, man. All right. Um, J Fades, you know, clean ass fades, everything you do is fucking phenomenal, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you look up to the most? You know, like, who's your favorite barber favorite that you're like, man, I want to be like that guy, bro? Damn. I think I wasn't ready for that question, but off the top of my head, man, I, I honestly, I'm just going to look back to my team, yo. You know, like, mm -hmm. I look at Flair, I look at KO, right? These are the two guys that are have always impacted uh, my close future, you know, because I look mm. at these guys, man, these guys are always doing something different, you know, like yeah. always looking for the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, mm. you know, so if it's some something, uh, it'll be my team, you know, and ultimately these two guys that I have next to me, you know, they, they push me to do something different, you yeah. know, and 
man, I could I can name a couple of the big barbers, but I, I honestly like uh, it motivates me, right? Seeing them do bigger stuff, but it, it has to be like something that truly like motivates me. Is it has to be my team, you know? It has That's to be dope. the guys next That's to me, and, and I always see that, and I'm like, damn, like they push me to do more, you know? Dope. Because I got I gotta be a leader for them too, you know, and they gotta be a leaders too, you know? And mm -hmm. we push each other and. And these are the guys that really motivate me because I see them every day. Every That's dope. Day. I like yeah. that because um, I have a phrase, bro, that I've been, I mean, Patrick Big Davey says it, but he says, you got to be a leader amongst leaders. So, like, you're leading yeah. someone, but you're leading leaders, too. Yeah. Now you got to be their leader and stuff. So that was deep that he said. What about you, Flair? Like, do you have any barber that you look up to, like, when it comes to fading, finances, or uh, just like mindset? I guess any? just the same thing, bro, same you know? Thing? Yeah. That's dope. Yeah, the same thing. Uh, I deal every day. Every day in my life with the guys, mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> with the people closest to me and stuff. And it's just every day you learn something new from everybody, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, you learn something completely different and you always see like, you know, that damn, we got a new barber. Like, dude, he's putting on a lot of content every day. Like, oh, I need Who's to Who's your newest that, you addition know? to the team? Uh, right now it's Chandler. Chandler, Chandler. I, I, I saw Chandler, the post yeah. that you posted in. You know, Chandler. Bro, he's going crazy with the content. I yeah. just started following him too. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, crazy. You know, so yeah, it's like an everyday thing that, that you Good know, my team. That, yeah. So you know what, the guys that I really look up to right now is just my team, uh, Tanya. You know, it's mm -hmm. just a couple of people out there that that's been on our team that have impacted my life completely, a lot. You know. And my sure. brother's always been there. He's always like the number one guy that I always look back to. And I always, you know, go for help, go for advice. Um, and yeah, you know, he said he's my big brother. You know, I look up to him, but, you know, I, no. I look up to him. So sometimes yeah. you feel it's like the other way around and stuff. Yeah. While you're looking up and you guys find your balance and stuff. Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. I wanted to ask another question. So. Um, I noticed that you guys did a barber battle, right? But then from there, you guys transitioned to a showcase. How, how do you guys feel about showcases now? Because I feel like people don't want to do bar barber battles anymore. I feel like... It's, it's it, been... It's, I think, at least for me, showcasing is more like networking. Yeah. When it was like barber battles for me, it's like you're going in there and you're just like, oh... Yeah, no, it's, a lot, it's a lot nobody, of egos you know? and stuff like yeah. that. You get me? So we we kind of got into that role. We made a big show about two years ago. Mm -hmm. Um... And it was a good show, you know, but yeah, looking back into to the to those times where the barber battles were coming along, it's just a clash of a lot of egos. And you think it's overplayed you know I mean? already or what? Uh no, sometimes I guess sometimes to kinda of spice it up a little it's, bit. You know that, you yeah, know? It's it's nice that. I, think, I think the industry really needs that they because need. it pushes like the next barber to man, I wanna do better. I know? feel like they I need we, we need to yeah, I need to do one, but we're like a a stricter criteria where like yeah. there's actually more like like goats yeah yeah, yeah like like, goats. It, like the barber like i want to see chewy and flair go at it it'll be some crazy coming shit. soon yeah, chewy versus flair going down soon Damn, that'd, that'd be crazy, crazy. that would be crazy nah that'd be crazy nah, there's, there's a lot of yeah. ideas you know i think uh, what separates the the bar the the barbering barber battles uh opposed to like the barbering showcasing i feel like you could definitely benefit from both, yeah, you know, definitely. because every time you leave those events and then you go back to the shop, you're so motivated. Like when we go mm -hmm. as a team and we come back, I see the guys and they're like motivated. They're like, man, I want to do this. I want to try this technique that I saw at this yeah. show, you know, but for the most part, um, the, the barber battling, like you guys said, people are going in there like in a competitive mindset mm -hmm. opposed to when you're going to the showcasing, you're kind of going more like in a friendly environment. Like, Hey, um, you know, I want to network. I want to see different techniques from these type of people. And I, I think that helps out a lot. I think both events are, are, are really a good advantage yeah. for everyone as an individual, you know, so continue to go to those, you know, but just know how to defer your, your, your mindset when you go to certain event. Like if you're going to yeah. a showcase, you know, bring your merch, bring, I mean, not saying not to bring it to the barber battle, but you know, bring your stuff, represent, you know, shake network. hands, yeah. network, you know, share your Instagram. Like not everybody that mm -hmm. you know right there 
has you as a friend on Instagram or okay. TikTok or whatever social platform that you're using, you know, like put it out there, wear a shirt with it on there, you know, yeah, do, yeah. do whatever it takes and gain the most of it. I think that's one of the, the, the best advice I could give anybody is just go in there. Don't be afraid and, 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 and let it all out. Let it all out. Be yourself. Always be yourself. Yeah. So yeah. The, the differences between that and, and probably our events right now have been that. That the barber battles is more competitive. It's more like uh, you take a mindset to like, yeah, we're gonna take this shit, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the showcasings that we've done is more of like, damn, let's go to a little junction. Yeah, yeah. You know, let's go let's have go fun. Support, you know, let's, let's go just... have a drink with the guys. Yeah, let's yeah. go. Let's go meet the team. Let's. Man, I want to see uh, Ko. Hey, I want to meet Ko. I want to be Chandler. I want to meet Chewy. Mm. I want to meet Flair. Like, let's go, guys. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know. So you get a different vibe. And a, and a different atmosphere in those events, right. you know? It's more loose. It's more friendly. It's more like, oh, like, hey, what's up, bro? Like, how you been? You know, like, ooh, damn. TT's doing something crazy. Mm. Hell yeah, huh? we've been practicing for this long. Like, damn, that's dope. You know, so <clears throat> it's a different environment. Definitely, yeah. definitely love the, the showcasing a lot more. It's, it's you know, you go there. It's less stressful. Yeah, to host without it. yeah, without being stressful as as an attendee as well too. If you're if you're com if you're competing, you're gonna go there. Damn, shitting breaks the whole time. You know, like yeah. damn, yeah. Oh, I forgot my machine. Oh my god, everything's going wrong. You know, and if you go to a showcase, like oh, I'll get I'll get somebody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. You get me. Yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah. That, that's what's dope about the um, the showcasing is that. That's kind of like, you know, when we did our showcase, you know, I remember Jay Fades, um, uh, we we did the showcase, but we built a group chat before the actual live showcase oh, came yeah, on. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah, the yeah. team and the people that we, because we were very selective on who we wanted mm. to showcase because we had this vision that we wanted Good. to, you know, that, that, that we wanted to bring out. It was a yeah. vision. And, you know, you have to sometimes select the right people. So one of the things that, you know, when I talked to Bert Mena at, at Premier, he was mm. telling me, it's like, no, bro, like, like I, I make sure I cater to the people that I want in my show so they can bring yeah. the best that they got um, in regards to, you know, like making them, making them feel at home, you know, like giving them the right hospitality and, 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 and being very clear on what you want the end project mm, to be. Yeah. And, when the, and, and once you flow with that and you do the group chat and you have a lot of communication, like it just everything just kind of flows and they know what the goal is of the whole sure, event sure. and it helps yeah, yeah. out compared to when like you're competing, like, you're not gonna borrow somebody's hairspray during a competition yeah. or, or yeah. glitter you're spray or whatever. Own. You kind of like you're, I, I ain't you're helping you. Like, like I like want dang. those five thousand, bro. Like yeah. I'm not gonna give you my glitter spray, yeah. and that's gonna make you win. And then you know, like then you left out. So like, damn, you forgot your hairspray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That sucks. Yeah. So that, that, that sucks that's kind of where, where is yeah. that? You know. But for the most part, I think that everything's so beneficial you know as long as you know yeah. you go with the right mindset to yeah, whatever yeah. event it is you right. know think, and just yeah. just going period you know mm -hmm. going period just getting going the most of it you know investing got, in uh, yourself i got a, a couple of experiences back then because when i used to compete a lot um it was a diff it's a different feeling man it is yeah yeah because yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> i'm packing my stuff and i'm like damn i'm ready bro we're gonna bring this dog we're gonna bring this you know and you go there and you're like I think I could do better than that, you know? Yeah, you're like, damn. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. You get me? And it's it's part of everybody that's mm -hmm. competed with before, you get me? Because I know I know GT. I competed against GT, uh, different other barbers that I've always talked and was like, yeah, bro. Like, I remember when I was going against you, I was like, I need to be better than this nigga. Yeah. <laughs> I think this nigga, this, the only competition <laughs> is this guy, you know? And now, like, at showcasing, like, no, you don't have that mentality, nah, bro. Nah, it's more love. You're, yeah, more you're like, love. hey, you know what? Let's just pick up the stuff. Let's go. Let's go show love and let's just mm -hmm. have some fun, man, you know? Yeah, I think that's what what uh, showcasing brings to the industry is more <clears throat> more of that atmosphere of, like, showing love to the next barber, you know? Showing love to the next barber and bring bringing something that you can add value to to the next barber that's yeah. coming to those events. You look at it more that way. If, you, if you're going to showcase, right, as a barber, I remember showcasing at GT Cuts. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of, like, all right, damn, like, what can I show these guys that are going to be able to see me, mm -hmm. you know? What can I do so that when these guys leave out of this showcase, man, they could take it and apply it to their, yeah. to their barbershop or to their careers, you know? And that's something that the showcasing brings, you know? And also going to these events, and, and right now, right, like, we just went to Tanya's uh, event. I, I went as a spectator, you know, and I went yeah. in there to 
to learn something, right, from somebody there that I knew I was probably going to meet, somebody different that I was going to probably learn some some gems, you know, whether it was business, barbering, haircutting, um, or even just relationship, friendship, anything, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it brings that. Showcasing brings that, you know, right. and it's something beautiful, something different to, to the that show. Game, that you know? show was lit. <coughs> it was dope. That I like show it. was I like, super I learned, I learned, lit. Like you know, three couple gems. Like, yeah. damn, the, like, the people that they took sure. over there was crazy. You get me? And man, shout outs to her, bro, because all the Tanya. hard work, all the hard work that I saw. Tanya you know? and Santa Cruz, you know, uh, yeah, Mo, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 Mo and Santa Cruz. He brought, he brought down a, f- a few people, and you know, I talked to him before the show started and everything. I was actually over there with him the day before, and he was, you know, like. I was like, bro, like, don't worry, bro. Everything's going to flow yeah. how it's going to flow. <laughs> like, yeah, he's yeah, over yeah, there, yeah. you know, cleaning the corner of a mirror. <laughs> he wants everything to be perfect. And I'm like, bro, just yeah, relax. Really you know what I mean? Yeah. Everything's chill. You know, like, just, yeah, you know, just those guys. do, do yeah, the hospitality be. like you know. And, you know, be yourself. And everything will work out. You know, b- bad things are going to happen. They're uncontrollable. Yeah, yeah, but just yeah. let it be. It'll be more yeah. organic that yeah. way. I was, yeah. uh, you know? I, was, I, was uh, I was there the day before where, where, you know, I was just there. I got there. And then he was like, damn, bro. He's like, tomorrow's the day. He's all nervous. Yeah. All nervous huh? He's like, Shh, oh, my God. I just hope nothing happens with the ACs or something. Oh. You know? Yeah. And yeah. I you mean, it's, I told him, you know what, bro? Like, at the end of the day, it's little things that are going to be out of your control. Right. You get me? Like, you have a great team. You have a great partner next to you that's going to help you out in everything. You know, whatever we can help out with, we're going to be there, you know? Uh, just enjoy yourself, bro. Enjoy yourself, and your event's gonna flow. And trust me, you guys are gonna have a sick ass, mm-hmm. kick ass event. Yeah, you know, and it is. It's what happened, bro. The event was off the hook. The event was crazy. Was lit. Yeah. You saw different talent. You saw different people. You network with everybody, and it went great. You know, yeah. it went great. And yeah, shout outs to them. Shout yeah. outs to Pro shout Studios. Out to Pro Studios. Pro Studios. Shout outs to so, Moog, actually, Moog yeah. Santa Cruz, and I shout outs to Tanya. Right. No? Yeah, you know what, man? Shout out to Pro Studios, right? They're they're building their team, and and it's a new experience for them, and I'm we're happy for them, you know. And and a lot of things are coming for everybody, you know. And coming back to the showcase thing, right? I think if it wasn't because of the showcase, we would have probably never met. Nah, you yeah. know. And so these are things that that happen at these showcases yeah. where you're able to meet different people. And look. We're doing a podcast right now, man. We met we met each other at that event, right? At GT Cuts, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. I was able to talk to I think you. At Colores. Right? Oh, at Colores too, right? We mm-hmm. that's where it all started, you know. And and it gives you the opportunity to meet different people that in the future, you know, you mm-hmm. you run it and you never know who you're gonna run to. Yeah, yeah. For in real. The future, you have a bigger you know? idea and, and you make something different, you know. Maybe it could be outside of barbering, you know. And that's what a showcase really brings you know yeah and actually I, I enjoy the showcase a lot like I, I love him just to network so what's coming for the future man what's your newest project that you want to announce to to the barber industry we have a lot of projects in mind bro we have a lot of projects in mind and first thing god it everything aligns itself um but it's just one step at a time right now you know so we're, we're taking everything slow we're taking everything uh at, with a good pace we're kind of more familiar into the business industry, so we have some experience on on the timing. Yeah, you get me. So yeah, we have a lot of projects in mind. Uh, the closest one right now, the one that we're focusing on, it's uh, a, a new shop. You know, we're opening up in in Lakewood. Lakewood, you let's go. Lakewood. Lakewood. Let's get it. We're coming to we're you. Coming, coming to you soon. guys. Lakewood. We have a lot man. of you know. Yeah, we have a lot of crowds. Hey, that's a good city. A lot of places. That's a good city. Lakewood. Great location, man. Great. Great location. We're probably yeah, Lakewood is it's rich. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's rich. Oh, well, are you guys man. doing it? You are you are you one of you guys going over there or what? So yeah, so you yeah. uh that's pretty much how how we're we're tackling it, you know. I mean we're two the good thing is that it's two of us, you know. So it'll be uh it won't be an easy move, you know. Obviously nothing is easy, but I think we have the experience to do something different now, you know. Uh back then uh we did certain things that probably didn't work out, but it was honestly it has been the best thing that could happen because it showed us the what we have to do now, you know, and it, it has brought us different different levels of communication too. Of like, oh, you know what, like you could do this part now, you could do this, right? And yeah, it's part of growing. We're we're in a better spot now, right, to do these things, to do this different move. And man, I'm excited. I'm excited for him, and I'm excited for me because we do have a lot of projects together, and we have a lot of projects. 
on the personal side too. I'm pretty sure, you know. Mm-hmm. And man, 2024, it's uh, be whatever we did. 2023 was a lot, right? But 2024, I'm, we're year, already heavy. tired. We're already tired for this for this year. But we got enough I energy to keep going right now. Yeah, every year is you know? different, you know. And and we've always pushed it, bro. I think uh, every year has g- gone better for us, you know. And it, it was all thanks to God, you know, because we I put my faith in Him. And I really do believe in him, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Every move that I do is like, man, I have complete faith that it's going to work, yeah. you know. And it's going to work to how he wants it to work, yeah. you know. And, man, I'm ready. I'm excited for 2024. It's a lot of different different projects coming soon. You know, like he said, uh, Lakewood is coming and, and we're building something dope there too, you know. And we're trying, yeah. to, we're trying to bring what we have in Linwood to, also to Lakewood, to Lakewood you know. It's not gonna be easy. It hasn't. It hasn't been easy, you know. But man, just hiring and and looking for the right team, right? Sure. Is really what's gonna yeah, help us yeah. in our next location. And uh, we need all the support from you guys. We need all the support from everybody. And and the same brands. thing, you know, because without without everyone's help, you know, we would be nowhere. You know, you guys have like a, a approximate date or no? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. We're pushing it. We're pushing it. We've been working in this project for a while now uh it's been uh we we took a little bit of time you know on choosing yeah. the location and stuff like that because it's, it's a major key you know um but as soon as we got our location and we started pushing it into things that we already kind of know how to get around you know <clears throat> uh but yeah uh we're we're hoping you know we're pushing this this location to to start business you know pretty 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 soon we're already taking out information and we're just going to be taking out this information as we go. Yeah. Uh, but for sure, for sure, you know, it's it's a lot sooner than a lot of people think. You get me? Everything's already in play. Uh, the whole building's already getting there, you know, and just the next step right now is like, hey, guys, we're hiring. Ooh, you know, yeah, we're yeah. hiring. We have a lot of DMs in our messages. A lot of people that have had contacted us about a chair. And unfortunately, we were very limited with spots, but... There's a lot of chairs to get filled up, you know, and yeah, there's a lot of already a lot of people interested, you know, and like we said, we're very selective on the team that we have that we're going to get. And I know there's a lot of people out there that want to be part of presidential. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to be part of something great. Wait, are you guys naming it presidential too or just yeah, the it's whole presidential? Well, presidential, but presidential. Uh, I, I I told Flair like we we can't run it like that. I, I feel like that kind of sounds weird. Presidential one, presidential. Oh yeah, no, 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 just presidential. presidential. Yeah, 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 just presidential. Yeah, just presidential. It's presidential. Presidential. You know, we had a uh, we had a uh, presidential <laughs> bellflower back then. You nah. know, and then and, and it just switched. I think up it'll a little be good bit. for your branding. Yeah. Just presidential. Presidential. Or, yeah. Yeah. Or presidential. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Presidential. We're bad. We built. We built. Yeah. We built a. We built a a big brand right now, and I feel like presidential just has its name of itself. And presidential in Lakewood sounds pretty nice, you know? Yeah. So That's Lakewood dope. needs a presidential in there, and the barbers yeah, around it. there need they something. Need it. They need you know, something. know that they want to work for. You know what I'm excited with. for, right, is... How many lives can be changed too, you know, because mm. that's how I see it. You know, when we open up a business is looking at the team, right, and looking how many lives you can impact too, you know, yeah. because that's really what we do. You know, we we try to impact someone's life so they can get uplifted and, and change their career, you know. And change, change their uh, families too. It's a lot of that too, you mm-hmm. know. It, it all comes back down to like how can you add value to them, you know. And I'm already thinking like, damn, like, we can't slack on it, you know. We got to bring something really, really dope mm-hmm. so that we can help the next people that are coming up, whether it's students, right, whether it's already barbers that are established but need to go to the next level, right. Yeah. I'm already looking at that, you know, and, and that's what excites me, you know, mm-hmm. because if, if I can do that, that ultimately is bigger than making more money. Yeah. But yeah. We, do, we do make it to make money, right? But ultimately what brings you more happiness is seeing – your your partner, seeing your team member, and seeing someone that that you probably didn't know back then, change their lives and and build something bigger with them. It's some, you know? Yeah, it's yeah. something like I said earlier, man. You know, you gotta just be focused on making them win. Seeing mm-hmm. them win makes you win. Yeah, you know. Yep. So yeah, guys, we're 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 ready. You know, we're ready. Is you know, we're looking. 
So if you're interested, if you want to be part of this sick ass team that we got going on, you know, be part of everybody that's in the family. Tap in. Tap in. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So before we go, we have we want to give you guys your flowers. I always believe that you got to give people the flowers before they pass away because we usually do it when you pass away. But yeah, I'm happy. I'm so proud of what you guys are doing. Um, The movement that you guys are causing in the industry. I know that there's a lot of good things coming for your lives. And that we we were speaking about it, like, as long as you guys believe in God, put your vision, have that vision, and put God in everything that you guys do, I think everything will be good. Um, I want to thank you guys for being here, taking your time off, for just hosting this episode, sharing your story, sharing your experiences as brothers, as business owners. Um, and, yeah, bro, I'm really happy to see your growth, and I know good things are coming for uh, 2024. Thank, KO, thank- you want to finish off? Um, yeah, for just finishing it off, wrapping it up right quick. Um, Thank you guys for having me part of being a team member of your team. Thank you for the great leadership. And, you know, cheers to you guys, man. It's going to be crazy 2024 with, you know, the what we know from the inside that we can't let out right now. Yeah. But, you know, big things are coming for everybody. And yeah. congrats to you guys. So let's go. Thank you. And Thanks. be on the lookout, you know, presidential belt, uh, presidential Lakewood, right? Yeah, Lakewood, yeah, Lakewood. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank, thank, thanks, Diego and, yeah. and Victor KO. For having us, you know, I appreciate the the hospitality. It's been great, uh, great vibes, everything, you know. So, so yeah, so, yeah, same thing, you know. Just want to end it with, you know, thank you guys, and also giving you your flowers, man. I've been seeing you grow too, thank you, and I know big things are coming. Just keep pushing, and man, this thing could be something, something big for the industry it's too. It's gonna you know? be, and and thank you, you know, with the same thing, you put God first, and you allow Him to guide you, right? Mm. Uh, everything will will turn out great, you know, and I'm seeing your growth and, and maybe next time around when we sit down, it's, it's, it's something already crazy, you know, and, yeah, and yeah, definitely. man, I'm, I'm looking it's forward to the beginning to, of something you know? great. Definitely. Yeah, I'm looking too. forward for that, you know, and, and, uh, you know, with, with, with all love and respect, you know, thank you for having me and mm-hmm. thank you for having us here. Same thing with Kale, you know, um, I appreciate you guys, uh, teaming up and doing something like this and, I want to give him his flowers, you know, because he's been doing something great, too. I'm seeing his growth, and I, I got a lot of respect for him, and I know he's going to keep doing bigger things. And, and the mm. next time we sit around, man, you know, we're going to be sitting at a different table, possibly, you know, with different mindsets, and we can still bring everything together, yeah. you know, and keep growing as as individuals, you know. That's the goal, man. That's the goal. Tell him a little bit about your, your shirt and what you got going on back there right before we wrap up. Um, I, I guess that's the new merch for Presidential Barber Lounge, right? So yeah, uh, we got this is our newest uh, team shirt. Um, Want to do something, you know, something that pops. We always try to s- stay with style, um, and obviously we want to do something for other barbers too that that look at us and and that have that want to have that presidential mindset because at the end of the day, all these shirts it, it's it means more more than just a shirt, right? It, it, there's a mindset behind that, and you know when you're rocking the shirt. You're rocking the presidential mindset, you know. And so yep. we have this new, we have this new shirt, right? We we get a lot of ideas from different places, but it, it says barbers, and the P stands for presidential, you know. And if if you need one, man, hit me up. Like I said, it's a mindset thing. Forget about the barbershop, right? Our our barbershop is basically ran by a mindset, you know, and it's mm-hmm. the presidential mindset, you know. And yeah. if if you need one, let us know. Tap him up. Tap him up. Tap All right, this was episode two of the DTB podcast. There will be a part two, I'm pretty sure. Let's go. Stay tuned for it, man. Definitely. Let's go. Let's go. Dope. Super dope. I think we went like an hour and a half on that.